So today we're going to learn about the empirical rule, also known as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. We're going to learn not only how to use the empirical rule, uh, but also why it's so important and why it teaches us something very important about normal distributions. So just a quick background, a normal distribution, known by its bell-shaped curve, is the most commonly used distribution in statistics. Many things can be described with a normal distribution because normal distributions naturally arise due to something called the central limit theorem. The normal distribution has two parameters which are easily interpreted. A parameter describes some aspect of the distribution. The two parameters for the normal distribution are the mean, denoted by the Greek letter mu, and the standard deviation, denoted by the Greek letter sigma. The mean mu tells us where the center of the distribution is. The standard deviation, sigma, tells us how wide the distribution is. Now, a normally distributed random variable can technically take any value. We say that the sample space, the set of all possible values of the normal distribution, is all numbers from negative infinity to infinity. So we can see this in this picture here, that these distributions in reality extend all the way out to infinity uh, and that all values are possible. However, these values on the outside, on the tails of the distribution, have very little probability. So though all real numbers are technically possible, the empirical rule tells us that 68% of observations fall within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of observations fall within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of all observations fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So let's take a look at a particular example of a normal distribution called the standard normal distribution. A standard normal distribution, also known as a Z distribution, has mean 0 and standard deviation 1. The empirical rule, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, tells us that 68% of the distribution is between negative 1 and 1. 95% of the distribution is between negative 2 and 2. And 99.7% of the distribution is between negative 3 and 3. Now let's take a more relatable example, something like height. Suppose that we know that human height is normally distributed with a mean of 66 inches and a standard deviation of 4 inches. What does the empirical rule tell us? Well, it tells us that 68% of people are within one standard deviation of the mean, so between 62 and 70 inches tall. 95% of people are between 58 and 74 inches tall, within two standard deviations of the mean. And 99.7% of people are between 54 and 78 inches tall, within three standard deviations of the mean. Let's do one more example uh, to get used to this. Uh, IQ. Uh, so suppose the results of an IQ test are normally distributed with mean 100 and sigma equals 15. The empirical rule tells us that 68% of people score between 85 and 115. 95% of people score between 70 and 130. And 99.7% of people score between 55 and 145. So why do we care about the empirical rule? Well, the empirical rule helps us quickly understand how often different values occur in a normal distribution. For instance, we know that most values are within three standard deviations of the mean. Thus, if something is more than three standard deviations from the mean, we know that that is an unusual observation. So the empirical rule gives us uh, some sense of what values are common or uncommon in a normal distribution. But there is a much more important lesson to learn from the empirical rule. The lesson of the empirical rule introduces us to a deeper truth. Not only is the probability of being within one, two, or three standard deviations of the mean the same for every normal distribution, but all probabilities related to normal distributions are completely determined by how many standard deviations from the mean that observation is. How many standard deviations an observation is from the mean is called the z-score. The z-score of x is uh, its distance from the mean, x minus mu, divided by sigma, the standard deviation. And this tells us how many standard deviations an observation is from the mean, and we call that its z-score. So, for instance, when we look at height, and we compute the z-scores of these values, well, we see that the z-score for 62 inches is negative 1. 62 inches is one standard deviation below the mean. Similarly, the z-score for 70 inches is 1. 70 inches is one standard deviation above the mean. So z-scores allow us to draw an analogy between any normal distribution and the standard normal distribution. Here, we have the distribution for height, and we draw an analogy to a standard normal z-distribution. And then we can use the empirical rule to tell us that 68% of observations are within one standard deviation of the mean.
Uh, similarly, the z-score for 58 inches is minus 2. 58 inches is two standard deviations below the mean. The z-score for 74 inches is positive 2. 74 inches is two standard deviations above the mean. So again, we draw an analogy to a z distribution, and we can use this to say that 95% of observations are within two standard deviations of the mean. Again, z-scores allow us to draw an analogy between any normal distribution, like the distribution of height, and the distribution of z-scores. And we can see this again with 99.7%. With uh, the z-scores for 54 and 78 are negative 3 and positive 3. And again, we can use the empirical rule to tell us what the probability of lying within that range is. Now, we can also use this to find probabilities that are not just 1, 2, or 3 standard deviations away. The z-table, which is often found in the back of a statistics textbook, contains values that allow us to extend the empirical rule to any two values. So, for instance, what is the probability of being between 60 and 70 inches tall? Well, first, we want to know what are the z-scores for 60 and 67. Well, the z-score for 60, we take x minus mu over sigma, 60 minus 66 over 4, and we get a z-score of negative 1.5. 60 is 1.5 standard deviations below the mean. Similarly, we can find the z-score for 67. 67 is only one quarter of a standard deviation above the mean. So we draw an analogy and we find out that we can turn this question about height into a question about z-scores. And these z-scores are stored in a z-table in our statistics textbook, which contains the cumulative distribution function of a standard normal distribution. So one single table about the standard normal distribution, the z-distribution, allows us to calculate probabilities for any normal distribution. So for instance, we can look up the z-scores that we found in the previous problem, and we can find the probability of being less than or equal to that value, which we can draw in a picture here. We can also look up the other z-score, negative 1.5, and find the probability of being less than or equal to that number, which we can see in the picture here. So after drawing this analogy, and finding these probabilities in our z-table, we can subtract this green probability from this red probability to find the yellow probability that we are interested in. And of course, if we don't want to use a z-table, uh, we could use software like R or a TI-84 calculator or Python or any type of uh, software like Excel to also find these probabilities, and z-scores uh, would still be useful for us. So now we were able to draw an analogy between the distribution of height and the distribution of z-scores to solve the probability of being between 60 and 67 inches. So what is the probability of being between 60 and 67 inches? It is 51.39%. So though all real numbers are technically possible, the empirical rule tells us that in a normal distribution, 68% of observations fall within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% fall within two standard deviations of the mean, 99.7% of observations fall within three standard deviations of the mean. These are z-scores. How many standard deviations you are from the mean is a z-score. And everything you could ever want to know about an observation in a normal distribution is determined by how many standard deviations it is away from the mean. We can draw an analogy from any normal distribution to a standard normal distribution. So in other words, it's z-score. The z-score tells us everything we want to know about the probability of an observation.